11 developers will make a video game, but no communication between them is allowed. Welcome to the Pass the Game Challenge. This is the largest edition yet. We've reached the double digits, and the end result is absolutely wild. So with that said, let's start with developer number one. Hey guys, I'm Thomas Stewart. I'm a full-time game developer during the day, but on evenings and weekends, I make my own indie games and YouTube videos. So feel free to check out my YouTube channel where I post videos about game development. But I gotta get going because I only have six hours to work on this thing. So after brainstorming a few ideas, I came up with one that immediately jumped out to me as fun and very appealing. A first person exploration battler where you explore a dense forest trying to find the most powerful creature in the area, capture the creature, then use it to battle opponents in an arena. It's not exactly like Pokemon, but it's more like, um, well, yeah, okay, it's exactly like Pokemon. So let's get into it. So I created a new Unity project and immediately started building a very basic forested safari area. I made super simple rocks and trees and started scattering them around. Making good art will be someone else's problem. After setting up basic character movement, I turned my attention to one of the core mechanics of the game, being able to throw what we're calling a capture ball. So I made a little sphere object, gave it some force at the appropriate trajectory, and Houston, we have liftoff. Now throwing balls is nice and everything, but we need something to throw them at. So buckle up because you're about to see my art skills at their finest. He's gorgeous. And now we just need to stuff the monster inside the capture ball. Perfect. Then I started building the battle arena. I created the basic layout, gave it some dramatic lighting, and turned my attention to monster combat. For now, the monsters will just jump toward each other, and when they hit one another, they'll be repelled backwards, and the game will use their stats to calculate how much damage they take. Oh yeah, I gave the monsters stats. And as you can see here, the combat system was working exactly how I intended for it to work. Yep, there were no problems with it at all. And to be honest, I was surprised that I still had some time remaining for my part of the challenge, so I decided to make things look just a little bit better. I expanded the safari and arena scenes, adjusting the lighting, and I downloaded a new skybox. Now I'm anticipating that someone else will make much better looking monsters, but for now we'll just give a little bit of variety here. And there we go, absolutely beautiful. And there we have it, we can run around, find a monster, throw a ball to capture it, transport to the arena, and fight our opponent to either win or lose. I'm really happy with how things turned out, and I'm even more excited to see how the future developers take this game and modify it or add on to make it fit their own unique vision for the game. Before continuing this game of adventure, we're super excited to announce that our premium game development course, the Game Dev Rockets, is reopening on the 12th of September. Along with it, we've just completed our brand new online multiplayer course, which we're offering completely for free to all people who purchase the Game Dev Rockets. Expert instructor and game creator Alex, the developer of the hit title Paint Wars, is actually bringing you through the entire process of creating an online multiplayer first person shooter inside of Unity. Like last time, seats will be extremely limited, so make sure to stay tuned for the 12th of September and join the 300 students who are already at the Game Dev Rockets, learning and bringing their dream game ideas to life. And with that said, moving on to developer number two. Hey guys, Lewis here from Awaken Studios. What I understood the game idea to be is you use a bowl to capture monsters that can either be of type water, normal or fire and then you get sent into arena to verse other monsters? Sounds like a game I know. But nah, jokes aside, it was a cool game idea, so first I started with the movement. To me it felt a little clunky, so I changed that so you could rotate your camera using your mouse. The next thing I noticed was the environment needed some work, so I added a uni to terrain, gave it some hills, gave it some grass, remodeled the tree, and then placed it around the map. And at this point I felt like the player felt very empty, so I gave him some hands. So I modeled up some hands in Blender, gave him some basic animations, and yeah, we have hands. And yes, I edited a slingshot. Uh, here's why, I think the old capture system before was too easy, so this adds a bit more challenge. Now you have to shoot the monster before you can capture it. Um, so I quickly modeled up a slingshot in Blender, added some animations, added some effects, added some camera shake. After this, I remodeled one of the monsters he had made, trying not to stray too different from his design, but it does look a lot different. Then I gave him some basic animations, just to uh, idle and run, and then I ragdolled him when he gets hit by the slingshot. And no, I know what you're thinking, no, we're not killing them, they're just sleeping, okay? Wishlist my brother's game on Steam, Elven Battlegrounds. Hi everyone, I'm Saturn from the India Court, a small game dev channel working on Monster Path, a roguelike JRPG. First thing I noticed while I was playing this game was how cool the slingshot mechanic was, but I quickly learned that the best way to kill an enemy is literally run right up to it and shoot it in the face. So from a game design perspective, I was trying to make the safari room a little bit more interesting. 
I wanted to take inspiration for Pokemon Snap and put the game a little bit more on rails so you move through the environment in a set path, but I didn't want to undo what the previous dev had did. The game already ended in a big arena boss fight, so I just made this fry zone more about tracking a big monster, and if you get too far away from it, then you like lose its trail. I felt like this really helped the game because it put it more on rails and it also connected the first stage to the second stage boss fight. To show where you could walk without losing the trail of the boss enemy, I used this Fresnel shader from a Brackey's tutorial. Rip Brackies. Since I was editing the safari level so much, I got rid of these lollipop trees, I replaced all the rocks, I added some new terrain, and just did a graphical tweak overall. The last thing I did was connect the two stages a little bit more by taking the actual model of the boss arena and putting it into the end of the safari zone so you kind of get to your destination and then go into the zone. I tried to move on to the actual boss fight, but in the end all I could do was spawn an enemy, spawn all of the good monsters that you had caught, but they didn't really have any functionality yet. Looking back on this, it was super funny. My original plan, I was like, let's make a schedule, let's organize everything, let's put a timer on everything and get it all perfect. And then I threw that all out the window and spent an hour modeling this tree. So have fun next guy, bye! My name's Cuba and I make games. At the moment, specifically a game about tile placement optimization called Tilelands. There was this sphere that the player had to stay in in the safari, which I understand had the purpose of guiding the player to the arena within a time limit, but I really didn't like how it felt. It was more of a restriction on my ability to collect monsters in the safari, and it made the task feel much more laborious than adventurous and decision-driven. Monsters also had elements, so I thought to myself, why not do a glorified rock, paper, scissors? That's actually a good idea. With that, I refactored the monster systems to use scriptable objects and implemented a way of comparing them in battle. I also removed the orb boundary thing and instead I added three enemy trainers which I placed on the route to the arena so that the player would still follow the path on the terrain but they would be able to bump into these initial blocking instances before they could go there. I also put the capture ball back into the game and stuck in some UI elements for showing the player what monsters they had captured so they'd be able to see after the fact. On top of that, I added in an interaction system which could later be reused for creating the entrance area to the arena, as I didn't have time to do that myself, and I added in a day-night cycle that would respawn all of the monsters randomly at the start of a new day so that the player would always have options for monsters to capture. If you do want to check out Tirelands on Steam and maybe give it a wishlist for me, I'll be forever in your favour. Hey guys, my name's Daniel, I'm from Hive. I just got the project, I have no idea what to expect, but I just see that the art style is phenomenal, so let's get right into it. So booting up the game, I was met with this lovely art style and some sort of catching system, but I noticed that the main game loop still needed some work done on it, so I started drafting up a few ideas of how the battle system could work. There was always the route of the generic Pokemon battle system, but I really didn't want to do that, so instead I took a page out of FPS's Chess's book and wanted the player to fight as the monster he selected. So with this mind, I started on a controller monster that I thought would be cool to have in third person, so I threw together a basic controller and got right into the fun stuff with some attacks. So for the attacks, I want to keep it pretty simple for now, just to make sure I would have enough time to get the main gameplay loop in, so I started with a simple slash. My plan is to have two attacks per monster type, one for the left click and one for the right click, but I decided to switch gears and implement the selection system. Thankfully, the other devs made this pretty simple and all I had to do was show the inventory and spawn in whichever monster the player clicked on, but now our little normal source seems pretty lonely, so I went ahead and added some simple enemy AI that would just chase and attack our monster. So now it was about that time to get the damage system working and I just went with a simple collision detection system that would cause X amount of damage on impact. With the monsters now being able to faint, I went back to finish implementing the rest of the game loop by allowing the player or trainer to choose a new monster from their roster when one faints. And if they run out of available monsters, the other one wins. With the game loop finally done, I still had another hour or two left, so I started by adding in an ability system which would let each monster have two attacks. So that was the time I had to work on the project and I think we got a pretty good base done with the battle system and we left it at a good point where people can go in and add some cool stuff. If you guys haven't checked out Hive, go do so already. 
Hey, my name is Vav and I was invited by Noah to take part in this project I'm looking forward to. I downloaded the game and honestly had a hard time understanding what was going on there. We have some monsters that we can capture with the slingshot, we have uh, trainers and apparently we can fight them with the souls that we've captured before. In other words, there is no game loop yet. But before trying to add some meaning to the game, I wanted to work a little on the visual part because honestly my eyes just hurt right now from looking at these rocks. Fortunately, that was an easy fix and and with the added ambient occlusion it becomes much more pleasant to look at. I've spent some time after that tweaking color settings in post-processing and working on improving the visuals of the day and night cycle. Now the environment is adapting to the night time by changing its skybox, the fog and ambient color. Alright, now to the gameplay. I like the slingshot, but I'm having a hard time releasing the ball at the right timing and usually fail the shot. To fix that, I added a change in the field of view of the player while he is pulling the sling, which both indicates when the slingshot is ready to shoot and also looks cool. I then wanted to somehow show the cooldown between the shots and ended up using this line under the crosshair as a cooldown indicator. These were very slight changes, but it now feels much better shooting the slingshot. After that, I started working on the battling aspect with the trainers. At first I thought I was doing something wrong, but then I saw the damage logs and understood that we just need a health bar. The battle had another problem, which was mm, this. So I decided to put some fence to limit the player's movement area while battling with the trainer. I quickly made the 3D model of spikes in Blender and now when you start the battle there is no way to leave the area until one of you wins. And when you do win, you get this circle image in inventory, which makes very little sense. I made some new icons in Photoshop and transformed them into amulets that would drop from each trainer. When you collect all of them, you can insert them in the podium that would open the main gates of the castle, which I also changed a little bit. The castle I think is a perfect place for a final boss fight and I hope all of this gives a more clear vision of the gameplay. That's all on my side, check out my channel for some interesting devlogs like this game that I made for blind people and yeah, time to pass the game to the next developer. Okay wow, there's only three more devs to go guys. Will we be able to turn this rather ambitious monster collecting battler into a polished and satisfying video game? My name is Antonio and I have been invited by Noah for working on this project. I made a health bar, the health system already exists there. I just uh, put the UI element and changed the code a little bit. And I'm happy how it looks like. The second thing that I wanted to do was uh, icons in the inventory. After editing images in the Photoshop, I started editing code. Depending on which monster you selected, that image will be placed in UI. And now you can see which monster you have chosen and it's much easier to remember his strength or weaknesses. Currently in the game are only two monsters, Monster of Fire and Retard, the normal one. So I decided to add three more like uh, Water, Air and uh, Earth elements. After editing icons again, I started implementing new textures, new power-ups, animations, particle effects for uh, special attacks and so on now let's try to throw a rock for the first time yep that's perfect okay after editing the code it's finally done every monster has a different special attack and different damage if you want to see more about me you can check out my portfolio Hello fans of Blackthorn Prod, my name is Alex Benton. I decided to focus more on polish and content rather than adding in new mechanics or features. I started by tweaking the view model so that it wouldn't clip through the environment. This was a pretty quick fix, but I think it adds a lot. Then I decided to implement UI to display exactly which monsters the player will be facing against when dueling a trainer. I fixed the monster wandering, now they actually turn to face where they're looking, and I fixed their point selecting to use local coordinates instead of the global coordinates, which was causing them to all go in the same direction, and I refactored the logic to improve the overall performance. I also polished up the monster capture effect to add a little bit more game feel. I went ahead and recolored the torches to add some theming to the arenas. It didn't take long to realize that the previous devs had been planning to stick a boss of some kind into the castle at the end of the map. So I copied one of the trainers, scaled them way up and gave them a larger arsenal of monsters to fight with. After looking into the monsters materials I realized that it would be very easy to add more monsters and so I did. I created an elite variant of each monster type as well as an extra one which shows up as the final boss. I gave each elite monster a fresh material and buffed stats as well as a totally unique icon since I totally know how the previous developer made these ones. I wanted to make it a little bit more challenging to find the elite monsters as opposed to the regular ones, and so I added a basic rarity system to make the weaker ones spawn more often than the more powerful ones. At some point, the camera system for controlling the monsters completely fell apart. I spent a good hour or two trying to track down the cause of this problem, but eventually I just had to leave it alone in the hopes that whoever picks up the project next would be able to deal with it. Okay, so let's see. 
What do we have here? Yeah, that probably shouldn't be like this. I'm gonna need some help with this one. We've got some work to do, fellas. I'm Airdas, and together with my teammates from Moonleaf Studio, Gantas and Migla have started analyzing the project to see what we could do to improve the game. We wanted to keep what previous developers made, so we mainly got some ideas to upgrade the project into a more polished state. So the first thing that I wanted to fix right away was the fighting. It was extremely glitchy because of the animations before. Then I fixed some other minor issues such as balls flying through monsters without colliding with them. I have added a limit that allows the player to gather only 6 monsters at a time, which made the game a little bit more challenging as well. After that I made the enemies a bit stronger by adjusting their attack range and size. Then I worked on the UI elements moved the amulets from the inventory screen to in-game screen, adjusted the health bars, and added an ability icon that displays the cooldown of the abilities. The fights were quite boring and had no feedback at all, so I added a little bit of joys, such as visual effects on a hit impact or monster death. And finally, I'm also kind of addicted to making tutorials at this point, so yeah, I added an interactive tutorial that seamlessly introduces the player to the game, which makes everything so much more easier to understand. Meanwhile, my teammates were working on the visuals. After seeing the project environment simple and low poly, I decided to just change some key props to make game look better. While looking for the reference, I stumbled on Robot and Fighting Arena from Dragon Ball Z. I took huge inspiration from there and I started making stuff. First of all, I made a robot from gathered concepts, then made a low poly arena with the audience in the background that stares you to death, added some low poly building with a fence and call it a day. Oh and yeah, I took some colors from one of the reference photo and made a color palette, textured everything and voila, sent it to Iridesk. I started with a sketch trying to figure out the style for user interface, then decided to go with a hexagon shape and made icons to represent monsters class. I also created an icon for each monster and made other UI elements to visually communicate the information to the player. After that I changed the font and created a game logo. Then I made new battle arenas and flags that corresponds to the trainer speciality. During the last few hours, we took some time to combine our changes and do the other minor tweaks. We updated all of the placeholder assets such as the arenas, trainers and user interface elements, adjusted the terrain to give the game a more stylized look, added a water shader, quickly changed up the post processing, fixed some other minor issues such as sound effects, and finally we have created a main menu for the game. On top of all the changes that were mentioned during our segment, we added loads of other minor stuff such as closing off the map so that the player is unable to leave the playable zone, adding a variety of sound effects, including nature ambient sounds, randomly chosen punch sound effects, and even a audience cheering sound effect when you win against the king. Then we added 4 different opponents that the player has to fight against, including a huge robot king with a crown on top of its head, managed to even squeeze in some animations for the gates, opponents and audience, and added a proper win condition as well. Speaking of games, we are working on Have, a game where you have to control two characters at once. Wishlist Have on Steam and check out the devlogs on our YouTube channel as well. Thanks so much for watching and remember that if you also want to learn how to make video games, we've got our free exclusive 2D and 3D training, which will bring you through the process of creating your very first video games using Unity, programming in C-sharp. It's gonna be amazing, guys. Check it out, link in the description, and make sure to like, subscribe. We've got some crazy videos coming up. See you real soon. Cheers.